What is it like being a Jamaican in Mauritius? Hi, I'm Xavier Murphy, founder of Jamaicans.com. And today in Jamaicans to the World, I talk to Sharon Barrett Campbell, a Jamaican living in Mauritius. Welcome, Sharon. How are you? Thank you. I'm, I'm pretty good. Thank you. Pretty good, good, good. So let's get right into it. Which part yes. of Jamaica you come from? So I was born under the clock, huh? Kingston. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so definitely I was born under the clock. I'm from a, a small area in downtown Kingston called Passmore Town. That's, um, if you know, it's between Elliston Road and um, South Camp Road. So that's where I'm from. All right. And which school, high school are you representing? So I represent the Swans. I'm from St. Hughes. Well, and that's where I'm from. Right. Well, when you said, uh, I think you said Salt Camp Road or right around there, kind of, you know, when, you know, back in the day when you're in an area, the school that's close to you is the one you, you, you go to. <laughs> Surprisingly, I went to Alpha Primary, but um, no, I didn't want to go to Alpha. I didn't want to go to Convent of Mercy. So I chose to go to St. Hughes instead. All right. Uh, I am a St. Hughes boy. I think I'd mentioned that to you. My wife mm -hmm. went to St. Hughes. So, hey, quite familiar with St. Hughes. Now, tell us your story. How did you get to Mauritius? Um, so I, we, my family and I moved to South Africa for our own five years. And then um, we saw uh, opportunities in Mauritius. And so we left South Africa and moved to Mauritius um, around four years ago. Um, I, my husband works at a um, company here and I teach him at a school. Okay. And... You know, it's right there off the uh, the coast. So it's yes. it's, a, it's, it's an island. Yes, um, it is. Um, tell us that, I, you know, what's the island feel? Kind of the, the, the different, you know, you're in South Africa. What was the feel? Is the feel a major difference? Um, so in, in South Africa, if you're a Jamaican in South Africa, everybody knows Jamaica and you're treated a little bit different. Here, it's not so much. Um, they all know Jamaica, they're all into reggae, but um, it's different in that the language is different. So they speak um, French, um, French Creole, Mauritian Creole and English. So it's a little bit different. You hear in a lot of different languages um, from okay. you know, all the migrants that come here. Yes. Yeah, so. No, I went to back up. You said in, in South Africa, they know Jamaica and, and you're treated a little differently. Is, you know, the, is, is it like, hey, you're Jamaican and you're really interested? Is, you know, is it that type of difference? Is it, you know, do it I get is. a free meal? Do I get a free meal when I go into the restaurants? <laughs> no, but you might get a little extra. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not a free meal, but you might get a little extra. But yes, yeah, so, um, you are treated a little bit different. So, um, okay. so yeah. And and um, so when you say you're a Jamaican too, is it Mar Mauritians? Is that the term? Yeah, Mauritians. Um, what typically is the response? So the typical response is, you know, um, Bob Marley and Usain Bolt and stuff like that. Um, that's usually, and, and recently Shelly and Fraser Price, they all know about them and they make the association, but I, as I said, there's a very rich reggae culture here. So they know about, um, all the more recent reggae artists. In fact, when I just came here, there were posters of Capleton on the bus stops and stuff. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that was happening here. But yeah, they're very into reggae. So they're very much, you know, aware of wow. Jamaica and stuff like that. Since you've been there, has there any, been any uh, major Jamaican reggae artists coming down there? No. So I, I came 2018 and of course, you know, the um, pandemic hit in 2020. So there wasn't any of that. But this month, 
Uh, Morgan Heritage is coming, so I'm hoping I'm able to go to, to see them. So that would be the big reggae act for since I've been here. So Morgan Heritage will be here in a, in a little couple of weeks. So I'm hoping I'll be able to attend. Nice, nice. Yeah, they're, they put on a, a really great performance. So you're, mm -hmm. you're in for a treat and uh, the Mauritians are in for a, a great show. <laughs> yes, I, can't, I, can't, I really can't wait to see them. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the food there. And if there was a dish that you would recommend, so Xavier, if you come and visit, you must try this dish. All right. So Marisha has a very, um, a similar heritage to, to Jamaica, slavery, indentured Indians, indentured Chinese. So their cuisine is a blend of European, um, Indian and um, Chinese cuisine. Huh? So you have... Um, all of that. I think probably my favorite though is the biryani, which is more um, Arab influence because there is a large Muslim population here. So I would say um, biryani is probably my favorite. And so that is something I would suggest that you try. All right. I, I know there's quite, you said, a quite, a, quite diverse um, with, you know, the blender of folks and so on. You said Indian and Chinese. Now, how is the Mauritian Chinese food? <laughs> and how is the Mauritian Indian food? All right, so Mauritian Indian food is very diverse. Um, so they have lots of different curries. They have lots of vegetarian dishes um, from the um, Hindu influence. It's really, really nice. I'm not much of a vegetarian type person, but I really you know, enjoy the vegetarian dishes that I've been exposed to since I've been here. Um, so that is good. The India, the Chinese, they have a very wide variety as well. Um, it's not your typical Jamaican Chinese um, dishes, but um, the min free uh, is really good. I enjoy that. So yes. And you know, I I I I like street food. Some you know, you know. You, you, oh, you, then you what? definitely like Mauritius. So they have an amazing street food. Huh? Nice. It really is huh? amazing nice. street food. No, has anyone opened a Jamaican or Caribbean restaurant there? No, uh, we were my family and I were probably the first Jamaican to settle in uh, Mauritius, so we. There is no Jamaican restaurant. We were thinking of it, but not yet. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm loving that idea. <laughs> when it when so when you cook your Jamaican food there and share it with um your uh, Mauritian friends, um, what's the feedback you get? Um, so a lot of Mauritian have been to um, Britain. And so they, ha they have already have acquired a taste for jerk chicken and jerk pork and so on. So when I do my Jamaican dishes, they all enjoy it. Um, I've made quite a few batches of jerk seasoning and given my friends because they really enjoy the jerk seasoning that for sure. Nice, nice. Now in terms of the, the fruits and, you know, veggies well mainly fruits are you getting your mangoes are you getting your you seen some of the things you'd get in jamaica there so the mangoes are here um you know sour stop sweet stop breadfruit they don't have as wide a variety of mangoes that we have in jamaica but there are a few and then there is importation of, of mangoes as well so i am getting my you know my mangoes. I'm not getting the East Indian and the Julie, but I'm getting mangoes. <laughs> Can't complain. All right, and and you know, I know I've talked to a few. I spoke to a few folks that are you know on the continent, you know, different areas in Africa, and one of the things they say is Aki, you know, and there are places I think in in um, you know on the coast, Ghana, and then you know yes. some of these places people are. Growing aki, have you thought about 
get an Aki tree and, and attend okay. to So they have very strict rules about carrying seeds into the country. Um, so trying to get an Aki tree in, I'd have to go through the government to get that type of thing done. But um, there's definitely no Aki here. Uh, but it will be something to contemplate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that when get you in a trouble, make you know, make sure you fill out and that that all your T, all your eyes and cross all Definitely, your Definitely, yeah. I would have you to know. do that first before I did I attempted anything like that. <laughs> so the people, tell us a little bit about the people there. Um, what are they like? You know, are they welcoming right away or it takes a while to warm up? Uh, what what are they like? People are very welcoming, huh? Um so I think within the first week of us getting here, we were invited to a, a wedding uh, that had a probably around a thousand guests at, at it. So they're very welcoming. And, um, you know, if you have any problems, you can always go to, you know, ask for help and they're very willing to help. No, back up on that wedding now. So that's a huge wedding was there it any is. you know what was it you know and again you mentioned the different cultures was it um you know it was a, um, a muslim wedding okay all um, right all right I, I know you know i've heard you know a lot of the muslim weddings are huge you know it's an affair and and some african african weddings also you know it's mm -hmm. an affair and um the women have and this and so yes <laughs> yeah it was it was really huge it was really yeah. huge and the pageantry i'm sure you enjoyed it oh yes oh yes the outfits and and all of that was it was it was very colorful um and i was just amazed though wow wow so you know um, you've been there for four years. Is there a tradition, um, or a little over four years? Is there a tradition or a custom that you have come upon? And maybe some of the weddings or something that you said this is a very interesting custom. All right. So they have. I don't know the name of the religious festival, but they have a, a walk, a pilgrimage to an area. Um, I don't remember the name of the place, is uh, Grand Bassin. So the name of the place is Grand Bassin and they have a pilgrimage to there each year and they have some huge, um, what would we call them, epigies or um, things that they walk with. And sometimes it's they're, they're walking like 50 kilometers from one area of the island to there and they're, they get blessed at the at Grand Bastard and then they walk back home with it. So it's a huge thing. It's it's beautiful to watch. And what, what time of the year this happens? So it happens around, I think, March, March, April. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and is, it a is it a holiday or? So they will start walking like on, it's usually over the weekend, if I'm not mistaken, and they start walking like two, three days before the public holiday. So it is a, um, it's a major thing. It's sponsored like by businesses, like different um, floats are sponsored by businesses and stuff like that. But it is amazing to watch. And as they walk along the street, they, they have um, stops that they can have water and food and they are treated by the community that they pass through. So it's really nice. Huh? Okay. So cost of living, what is it like there? And if you were to give me an idea of, in terms of food, right? And let's say I was to go to a medium restaurant in US dollars mm -hmm. or in pounds or whichever currency you choose, what would that average meal be? cost and that's i'm just using that as an example it may not be the best but mm -hmm. you know for cost to live in there for a medium i would say you can get um for a medium meal like 10 us um per person 10 to 20 us per person 
Not bad. Um, it would give you like both um your entree, your desserts. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Uh, so cost of living, you think, is what medium, low? It's around medium. It's 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 um. Let me think. It's it's not that expensive. Food is relatively expensive because a lot of it is imported. But uh, if you were to compare to Jamaica or to the U.S., it's roughly medium. It's not okay. very high, not very low either. Okay. Language. You mentioned earlier there is, um, I think you said French, English, French. and um, a Creole. Did they call it a Creole language? Russian Creole, yes. Okay. And then you have a lot of Bangladeshi here. So you hear um, Bangladeshi, you hear Hindu you'll hear Arabic. Um, so we get quite a lot of, and of course, it's a tourist destination. So you get German, French, all the European languages here as well. So did you have to learn French? Um... No, everybody, just about everybody speaks English. It is um, like Jamaica. It's a English, it's a part of the, the British Commonwealth. So most of the official um, communication is in English, so I, I didn't really have to learn French okay. to be able to communicate. No, the, 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 the Creole language, is that spoken, you know, amongst, uh, on the street, at home, at, you know, every, yes. you know? everywhere? Yes, everywhere. It's spoken everywhere. Um, it's, it's French Creole, basically, so it's more French influence than English influence, as in Jamaica. So um, it's, I don't speak it, but right. I pass for Creole. So, you know, I'm on the road and people start talking to me in Creole and I have to say, je ne comprends, or <laughs> some such thing. So, yeah. Well, we're going to get back to that. I may put you on the spot with it. If you have watched, you know, the question I asked at the end. So we may put you on the spot with, with that one. <laughs> so if, if there was a place or an event, you mentioned one event in, in March, April, that is great. But if there was an, you know, maybe it's another event or a place that you say, Xavier, if you visit Marisha, you must have to either visit this time of the year or this event or this place what would it what would it be um i can't think of any one event um all right we, we'll try to say, to but if you come to mauritius you have to go hiking huh? they have some beautiful hiking trails you definitely have to go to the beaches um they're one of the things I really like about Mauritius is that, you know, on weekends, people go, they camp out at the beach and they spend the whole weekend there. That is, you know, that is something you might want to try, spending the whole weekend at a beach. Wow. So families just get together, we're leaving for the they weekend. They just get together, they cook on, on the beach, they have, you know, they carry their um, guitars or any any other their sound box and they play their music and they're there Friday night Saturday night and Sunday they go home. Nice. Have you done it? I've done the no. I've gone in the morning with my tent and I leave in the evening, but I've not really spent the night over there. No. All right. So you're slowly inching in where slowly inching I... into the culture. Yes. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe you know, some people like like camping and some people like the, gl the glamorous one, which is the glamping. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you absolutely just love about Marisha? What, 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 what would you say if you could pinpoint one thing and say, boy, since I've been here, I just absolutely love this? I would say the safety. I really, really feel safe um, here. You... You can walk with your phone in your hands. You can, you know, you go downtown and something goes missing. They'll call you and say, you left this at this place or stuff like that. So the safety, knowing that you're safe, I think is one of the, the best feelings um, being in Mauritius has given me. All right. So I'm going to come back. I know you teach there. And um, 
you know, with, with, I don't know what age, age group, but kids are always curious. You know, I'm assuming it's, I'm assuming it's kids, <laughs> right? Or, yes. or teenagers. I you teach know. high school. Okay. All right. So have you gotten any curious questions about you being Jamaican? Um, not really, no. Um, okay. they're, they, they find it odd that I'm here, but at the same time, I teach at an international school. So uh, a lot of their teachers are foreigners. So okay. uh, it's not that different because I of that. See. I see. I see. Now, the beaches and just the layout, can you travel around the island in a day? You can. Huh? You can. Oh, cool. huh? It's smaller than Jamaica, around two-thirds the size of Jamaica. So you can drive around it within the day. Uh there are lots of lots of beaches in similar to Jamaica. Um, so it can be traversed within a day, but if you want to stop and really enjoy it, then it will take a little longer. All right. Well, listen, you know, Sharon, thank you for, for spending some time with us and telling us about your journey uh, to Mauritius. And, you know, I'm winding down. I have a couple of questions here. First, let's start with this scenario. You get on a plane, you land in Jamaica. What is that first thing that you're doing? Whether it be some people is kiss the ground, some people is I'm buying this food, I'm visiting here. Okay. So my first thing would be... An I'm heading to Tasties in Harborview, and I'm having my full of true juice, um, guava, or um, guava juice. I'm going to be having sour sop. I'm going to be having June plum juice. I'm going to be having a full house patty. Yeah, that would be my first thing. <laughs> so, and then I go to get ice cream. Devon House. <laughs> Devon House for sure. <laughs> all right so here is my my last question i have for you how do the mauritians say goodbye in the most informal way you know we jamaicans will say little more you know all the folks catch up on the strong you know you're just you know, putting me on the spot that I is teach putting you on the spot international school we all just say bye <laughs> All right, so if anyone from Mauritius is, is watching, please put in the comments, you know, in your French Creole or, or whatever language you choose, how you typically will say uh, informally goodbye. <laughs> Sharon, thank you again for, for telling us your story. Uh, all the best, and we'll do, it, we'll do it the English way. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Show some love now. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss a video.